It's hard to get an idea of how good a computer is by just looking at specs and numbers on a screen, but how good is the base model Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip? I'll take this through my daily workflow with my day job. I'll take you guys along with me and then I'll come back later in the studio and we'll edit some YouTube videos and I'll go over how it performs in that situation too. So let's do a day with the M1 Max base model Mac Studio. I'm gonna need some coffee though. I look like a zombie. <music> For my day job, I'm a designer at a software and design agency, and it's not uncommon for me to be doing something like web design, print design, and then uh, video, and maybe even some web work too during the day or during the week. So it's really important for a machine to be able to do all of those things and sometimes all of those things at the same time. That's where machines really struggle for me. If I have to edit a video and also have a print document open that's humongous, things can really slow down on your machine really quickly. So I'm interested to see during the day how this machine will handle stuff like that. We have safely arrived. So at work, I'm typically using the 16 inch MacBook Pro and it has an HDMI on one side and some USB-C ports on the other. That's usually how I hook it up to my two displays here. I have the 27 inch cinema display and a random Dell screen that I used to use as a gaming monitor. But um, for this, I'll be using the HDMI port and the cinema display will use one of these USB-C ports. For the cinema display, I had to actually get a adapter because this is a Thunderbolt. So this is a Thunderbolt to a USB-C dongle. Dongle life. All right, so far so good with the M1 Max. It's now lunchtime. I've been recording what apps I've had open, the work I've been doing and how the computer's been handling so far. Uh, spoiler alert, so far so good, minus one thing. So. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Maybe I can alleviate that. Um, I kind of have an idea how to get around it, but we'll see how it actually works in practice. Uh, but so far, so good. Okay, so after a full day of work with the Mac Studio, what's the verdict? Well, I had a lot of different productivity apps open. I had design and video apps open and then just for kicks, I opened some web development apps and I could not get this to stall a single time all day. Just to run through how many apps I had open quickly, my productivity apps that I have open always are Alfred, 1Password, Airmail, Chrome, Slack, Harvest, Dropbox, Spotify, 1Password, Evernote, Notion, Magnet, and NordVPN. And on top of that, my regular work today involved Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and then uh, just, I didn't have any web work to do today, but I wanted to try to get the M1 Max to stall out and lag a little bit. So I acted like I was gonna work on a website and I opened VS Code, MAMP Pro, iTerm, SQL Ace, and Get Tower. And I acted like I was changing some things on a website, had a build running, and it didn't stall a single time. It was actually very quick. The one limiting factor though, was the 512 gigs of SSD on the base model. I was just setting it up like I would set up a normal computer to work with all of our client assets and marketing and graphics. And once I started adding my files to the machine as well, the internal space just filled up and I had to use an external um, Samsung T7 drive, which was really fast, but at the same time I had to use an external drive to actually finish what I was doing today because I just ran out of hard drive space. So if you're purchasing the base model uh, Mac Studio and you're doing a lot of different stuff and you don't wanna to have to plug in hard drives, I would say the first thing you wanna upgrade is that hard drive. All the stuff I was working on today was client work that I can't really show you guys. I don't wanna to have to clear it with the client to put it in a video, but I have no problem showing you guys my YouTube videos. So let's go back to my office and we'll leave all the stuff open that I was working on today and we'll put my Premiere Pro files 
from my YouTube videos, which are much more uh, CPU intensive. Let's see if we can get this M1 Max base model Mac Studio to lag out a little bit. I ordered coffee, right? Now we've been here a long time. She's only filled my cup three times. I mean, when I order coffee, I want it filled six times. Okay, so now that we're back in my office after a full days of work, we're going to try to put the Mac Studio to the test with my resource intensive YouTube videos. After working all day, there really wasn't a hiccup with that M1 Max chip minus the lack of hard drive space. So I'm not gonna put the hard drive space, you know, I'm not gonna dock too many points for that because that's kind of on me. I should have upgraded that when I first got it. But let's see if we can get, with all of my other stuff open in the background, let's see if we can get the M1 Max chip to lag and drop some frames on an intricate playback of a YouTube video. So I have multiple 4K clips and color grades and different frame rates interpreted to 24 frames per second. So this is a very resource intensive edit right here. And let's just start with playing color graded 4K footage and it's playing that fine. It's able to play the graphics just fine. Um, that's not very resource intensive yet, but whenever we are fast forwarding through an edit like this, with multiple clips of B-roll and color grading, things can really choke up pretty easily. So it looks like it's going through all of these just fine so far. And a lot of this is, you know, recorded from my Ninja, recorded from my A7S III and my A7 IV in different frame rates and all kinds of stuff. So I'm very surprised it's able to fast forward through this and I'm not noticing any dropped frames yet. Now after we're fast forwarding for about 30 seconds, we're starting to see some stutters and dropped frames. So it's playing back footage fine, but whenever we start fast forwarding through it, that's when it starts to catch up. So let's pause and fast forward twice. This is really resource intensive for all of my computers. So I'm interested to see how long it will let. And there we're starting to drop frames, but it picked back up. And we have different frame rates and different cameras, and it's still picking up just fine. We dropped a frame there for a second, but we've been fast forwarding without any drop frames since. And yeah, this was recorded on my Ninja. This was my A7S III. So we're going back and forth between a lot of different things, fast forwarding times two, and we're still not dropping any frames after that first one, that was a little strange. A really difficult thing for my Windows computer to do is to rewind on a timeline that has multiple frame rates and cameras and color grades. So let's just hit J and see how long we can rewind on this timeline before it starts to drop frames and lag. It seems to be rewinding just fine, so let's rewind times two, and I expect to see some drop right there. Now we're dropping frames, so rewinding times two is really resource intensive, and this M1 Max is struggling with that. Not a big surprise since all computers I've ever used uh, struggle rewinding times one, but the Max was able to do times one just fine. It was when we went to times two, it started to struggle. I'm going to export this exact timeline. This is about eight minutes and I will see how long the M1 Max takes to export this timeline. So I just exported my eight minute sequence in Premiere Pro and it took a grand total of two minutes, 38 seconds to export an eight minute sequence. I was really happy back in the day when an eight minute sequence took eight minutes to export. I thought that was a huge milestone. And then now my PC can export about eight to 10 minute videos in four to five minutes. So I thought that was huge. But now this M1 Max exports in a quarter of the time it takes to play back the entire sequence. So I assume the M1 Ultra can export that even faster. But there's a point where I haven't really ran into many hiccups with the M1 Max, so I can't really justify spending the extra amount of money on the M1 Ultra. I would rather put the money I was gonna put towards that higher end processor into maxing out as much storage space as I possibly could. The SSDs on these machines are blazing fast and working off of them is a dream to work with. Transferring files from an SSD onto this machine I was able to utilize the full read speed of my SSD. So it was copying as fast as it possibly could. If you like sitting down in a studio, 
when you're not going to be moving around very much, the Mac Studio is a fantastic deal. It can deal with everything I threw at it today, and that's really the brunt of my workload. So if I had to only use one machine in a studio, the Mac Studio could totally hold its own. However, I do move around a lot, and I purchased the M1 MacBook Air when it first came out, and it is a little limited in what it can do, but in a pinch, it can edit A7S III footage pretty well. It can't have a lot of things open at once, but it can hold its own for a $1,200 machine. The 16-inch M1 Pro is a more premium experience over the MacBook Air, obviously, but where does this fit in between the Mac Studio for me? That's something that I really want to deep dive into, and I would like to compare uh, all three of these machines. I think that'll be an interesting video and Apple keeps releasing M1 chips. We have the M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max. Um, I don't have the M1 Ultra, but that just seems like way overkill for what I need. Check out some of these other videos and I just want to say thank you guys for uh, sticking around with me for a full day in the life and I'll see you in the next one.